Welcome to this episode of the New Space India podcast, a bi-weekly talk show that exclusively talks about India's space activities. When the Indian Space Research Organization was created in the 60s and the government of India invested continuously for two decades plus, a tremendous amount of capacity was created in both launch vehicles and satellites. There was international demand for Indian space products and services. This saw the creation of a dedicated commercial venture project spinning out of the Indian Space Research Organization to take the products created by ISRO to markets outside of India. So the Antrix Corporation was born and for the last two and a half decades it has been functioning as the commercial arm of the Indian Space Research Organization and as a point of contact for business for international companies to access India's space products and services. Of course the most popular aspect of Antrix that we all know is the launch services that it provides to companies all around the world since the last decade. My guest today is the Chairman and Managing Director of Antrix, Rakesh Shashibhushan, who I sat down in his office in Bangalore to have a chat about Antrix and also the emergence of new space in India and some of his thoughts and recommendations for the future. Thank you, sir, for giving me your time this morning. Um, I'm looking forward to this conversation with you. Welcome. Firstly, I wanted to know, for a lot of uh, the audience uh, abroad who are doing a lot of new space activity, they want to understand what is antrix and how the indian space research organization and the commercial version as- aspects of it are organized so can you just give a debrief on how the commercialization of the research products of isro works okay antrix was uh, formed in 1992 to market the spare capacity of uh, isro basically in the uh, remote sensing data product side because at that point of time the number of remote sensing satellites were small and uh, uh, we sort of at that time realized that uh, there is an opportunity for internationally there were a lot of uh, demands also coming uh, from across the world there is an opportunity for uh, uh, you know commercially exploiting this uh, capability and uh, <clears throat> also there was a requirement uh, for uh, uh, interacting with the industries in indian industry space industries and uh, taking up uh, these activities on a commercial scale at that point of time and this proposal was put up and approved in uh, in 1992 i think and antrix was uh, officially uh, constituted as a company in, uh, under the companies act in 1992 uh, antrix uh, works very closely with isro and uh, the primary uh, task is to see the uh, spare capacity where it is available both in services as well as in products and then uh, you know uh, give it to users both within india as well as outside and our uh, revenues about 80% comes from uh, the uh, satellite transponder leasing in india which is again a uh, monopoly in india today and uh, uh, the export revenue basically from the launch services but we also do mission support services because isro has got a a uh, very powerful uh, uh, very large ground uh, system network in india and uh, that has got a spare capacity also and when uh, then we market it worldwide and then uh, support the missions worldwide missions uh, with these capabilities so this is a basic uh, thing that we do antrix uh, of course um, has become very popular for the launch services in the last uh, decade or so until about the last uh, decade the number of satellites that were launched by antrix were actually quite limited and only in the last decade or so you see the flood of the number of satellites that were launched including 100 satellites on one rocket or so uh, what's the reason that you see this big uptick i think basically it is the deregulation of uh, small satellite launches in the us which has uh, resulted in a flood of uh, small uh, satellites uh, being exported outside the us and a good uh, percentage of that was captured uh, by our launch services especially pslv <coughs> because we had in most of the pslv launches some spare capacity that is available Uh, which was uh, marketed uh, for uh, these purposes but uh, at the same time uh, the uh, small satellite requirement from us has also uh, increased especially in the last probably 5 years or so or maybe last 2 to 3 years i would say uh, which has also resulted in lot of uh, small uh, satellites not cube sats uh, in the us it is mostly cube sats uh, of that order maybe nanosats and uh, the uh, satellites less than 50 kg for that matter 
and from Europe we have seen uh, more microsats uh, coming out and that has given us in many years though the number of satellites were more from the US. The revenues were more from uh, the other countries because of the larger size of the satellites. And uh, with respect to when you talked about how the commercialization aspects came into, you know, with remote sensing and then launch services, one of the interesting aspects of commercialization is actually the technology transfer from ISRO. When Antrix was formed, the way technology transfer happened to many of the spin-offs uh, inside the Indian industries, why do you think that was not really handed off to Antrix or was it? Yeah, that was always uh, a job that was done by ISRO because many centers had uh, their own uh, sections which handled the technology transfer and that was limited to spin-offs mainly. Uh, after I came to Antrix, uh, I came with an idea that uh, this is not going in the direction that is really required for the Indian uh, commercial space to pick up and India being a major space wearing nation and uh, the commercial companies in India do uh, have a big opportunity there uh, to be recognized globally and then you know come up and this will result in uh, ISRO also benefiting uh, from the systems coming from the industry to be utilized and the whole productivity of the nation will increase and also the uh, in, uh, the export revenue uh, of the uh, uh, the country in this particular sector also will increase. So with this objective we have initiated technology transfers basically uh, small uh, satellite technology and also we put forward the requirement of a small launcher uh, back in 19, uh, 2016 to ISRO saying that this is uh, because at that point of time the small satellite requirement was booming and we saw this opportunity and we, we uh, saw that uh, this uh, launching with the spare capacity of PSLV when PSLV becomes available is not the way to go forward and the to capture the commercial market and we put forward the requirement and ISRO uh, thankfully accepted it and this is actually the first commercial fully commercial work done by ISRO that is the small satellite launcher or the SSLV so to say and uh, Andrix wanted to totally do this in the industry. We understood that uh, this will be competing basically on price and quality and which means that uh, they should have dedicated production facilities and the people who produce it should understand it, the product from end to end, uh, which is not uh, there today. Today, most of the industries associated with space are basically subcontractors. They are providing some kind of service, but they do not know what they are making or what uh, sub, uh, system finally it will enter into. So this uh, change in scenario uh, is the first step towards uh, commercialization. And towards this objective, we had uh, taken up those uh, activities. And so this is actually a big change in the whole uh, Indian space uh, economy, I would say, because uh, until the last 50 years, as I understand, most of the Indian vendors who work with ISRO actually have almost no IP of their own. It correct. is essentially is ISRO correct. engineers yeah. building up the IP mm. and the industry producing uh, it for ISRO. Mm. How do you see the maturity in most of these vendors coming up where the vendors are allowed to have their own IP or build up their own IP and there is an ecosystem for that to be absorbed within ISRO? No, this uh, new space system that is coming up uh, is very exciting and uh, uh, from the point of view of creating uh, a whole lot of IPs uh, in the private sector which will result in a lot of... Uh, uh, freedom uh, from the mundane work of ISRO is uh, definitely a very, very uh, attractive and um, development which should be encouraged. <coughs> this is uh, my strong feeling. And uh, when the technologies uh, are required and most of the technologies, some may be old uh, technologies, but still uh, when it is transferred to the industry, they will climb some steps uh, and the initial uh, time, time and effort required for making the basics right may not be there. So from there they can uh, really uh, accelerate uh, their development and then make a product which is world class and then uh, which can be marketed worldwide. And uh, we can also buy that and then use it in our system. So this uh, is a win-win scenario for both the industry as well as uh, the Indian space program. One of the things that is uh, constantly missing in India that I see compared to other mature space ecosystems around the world is actually the size of the space economy. So if you look at uh, either you know the US or uh, European Union or even UK, 
one of the things that uh, most of these countries talk about is actually what is the sp size of our space economy in india you know we have some numbers as in you know we know for example how much is uh, isro getting as a budget or how much uh, money antrix is earning or how much uh, transponder capacity or dth market is the size but we actually don't have a very comprehensive uh, guide to that this is the space economy of india and this is actually the number of companies this is the total amount of gdp contribution of the downstream activities um, why do you think all this has not been tracked over time or if there is no in interest at all in all of this no 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 i mean i would say that uh, security considerations was prime in uh, space activities of course you are aware that uh, most of these technologies are dual use and uh, had to be controlled in some way or the other uh, so uh, it was uh, government uh, probably uh, was of the opinion that uh, uh, and isro is doing a good job i mean they are uh, uh, meeting the needs uh, of the country and uh, that also gives confidence to the government that uh, the whole activity is under control in safe hands and uh, the requirements uh, future in future also will be met uh, by the uh, de uh, designated agency so probably that is the reason why uh, there was not a big thrust on the commercial aspects when you consider uh, two countries india and china together you see a lot of similarities in how they approach space because in both of these countries uh, state is the one which is driving most of the space activities but there has been one big change in the last 5 years in 2014 china actually allowed the private sector to enter and you see about 8200 new startups in china who have raised maybe a billion dollars in all and are trying to do their own uh, companies across the value chain um, and you see india there is hardly about you know 10 or 12 of these companies uh, who are in various stages of maturity do you think we are already you know behind time and how how can we you know c catch up yeah good question uh, i agree with you uh, this is something that should have been done sometime back itself and we should have enabled uh, the commercial space to blossom and today we have uh, all the ingredients uh, uh, for that and uh, uh, the country would definitely benefit uh, from the boom in the commercial revenues uh, that is happening over the world which is projected to, uh, projected to touch uh, around uh, 1 trillion dollars in 2040 so that is a huge growth that is uh, going to come and we must enable our industries to uh, capture a fair share of the market and uh, that is something that needs to be done and we hope that uh, the new upcoming space act uh, will be followed with policies and other steps necessary because regulation is the first step uh, a positive regulation and enabling uh, regulatory framework is 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 the first step towards uh, achieving this goal and that will be followed uh, once a good regulatory framework and enabling regulatory framework a business friendly regulatory framework is there then of course uh, that will attract a lot of uh, investments from various agencies into the space ecosystem and that will be the starting point uh, for uh, these technologies and the commerce also to grow in india in a recent uh, chat with one of the startups that i was having here uh, they mentioned to me that uh, the tax regulations in india are actually skewed for them because essentially you know one of the startups wanted to launch uh, out of india and they noticed that uh, if you come in as a foreign company you pay zero tax uh, to launch on indian rockets but if you come in as a indian company you pay 18% gst which is quite a lot given that the prices can be uh, 30 or 40000 yeah, dollars because see uh, this is true but uh, to offset that uh, we were also offering a policy in which an indian company coming for launch will be getting a, a, a price uh, which is not the same as the price that we offer to foreign companies through which we aim to sort of uh, offset some of the penalties uh, associated uh, with uh, an indian company so i think overall uh, we are trying to see that uh, the indian companies are not penalized as far as this launch is concerned but i am sure that when more and more companies and more and more launch and more and more revenues get generated from within india government will be considering uh, this uh, particular aspect and to 
uh, you know nurture the uh, indian companies to come and launch from india definitely a policy change is required we had brought it to the notice of the government so it's not that the government is not aware of this uh, but then uh, because the we the, a financial case building uh, was not possible uh, it is difficult for them also to the government also to just like you know come with a uh, uh, reduction in the, in the uh, uh, gst that is applicable but we will see uh, as far as the pricing is concerned through that we will try to uh, see that uh, some of this uh, additional load is reduced to the extent possible one of the things that uh, we talked about regulatory uncertainty one of the things that is critical uh, when you look at industry or startups to be able to mature is actually the licensing regime and if you look at the us there are mainly four authorities there one is fcc which does the uh, telecommunications related licensing and then you have faa regarding the launch uh, so on and then you have uh, the state state or the commerce department for the export control and then you have noa for imagery based licensing and uh, so these are like although there are four different authorities there is a chance for us in india to leapfrog them where we actually can consolidate all the functions and have one agency or one institution that can do all of that for the private sector to actually mature so how do you think uh, this should play out in india yeah, this is a good point that you brought out uh, this is probably an advantage for the late comer uh, the late starter and which we can really look at the scenarios existing in the world and the bottlenecks imposed by these these kind of regulatory bodies and we can form one body uh, with a single point contract for addressing all these issues it's definitely possible and we are at an advantage because we are a late starter to do this so i'm for that one of the other uh, aspects of uh, maturing startup ecosystem or even a private industry ecosystem is actually having a research grant or core research partnership kind of ecosystem uh, we see that uh, very mature in um, isro's engagement with academia where you have respond program uh, to work with academia or so on but uh, there is nothing much for any private industry today to work in research mode independently with isro or even antrix or so is there any policy that can be brought up where this aspect can be matured i think after uh, the space act is enacted we have also recommended some policies to cii out of this creation of a fund is one and a dedicated space fund which gives grants to uh, meritorious uh, proposals or research work that is being done by the private sector uh, is a driver Uh, which uh, must be very seriously looked at and we hope that uh, uh, it, it's this will come in the near future so we've talked a lot about uh, you know things for the future but let's talk about actually what is uh, the advantages that india has today um, in in your sense you know where, what do you see as we are having a huge advantage in india which we are actually not leveraging today this is this is uh, a very important point uh, india being a major space faring nation is uh, sitting with an advantage where indian companies can actually uh, you know uh, take space pedigree through uh, you know uh, collaborative programs with isro and that space pedigree will help these companies to step up into the global platform and do well and that is one big advantage that uh, we must leverage so it is not being leveraged now Uh, and um, this is something yes uh, this advantage is being uh, we should not lose out on that advantage we must make full use of it and uh, leverage it to the benefit of uh, the indian companies who are who have many of them have come up on their own uh, even you know 5 uh, years or 10 years back uh, it would have been impossible to imagine a private investment in space in india so today the scenarios have changed and there are many vcs even contacting me to see where to invest in space which are the companies so this is a welcome change this is a big change that is happening and uh, hope the government will take note of it and do the regulatory modifications creation of fund uh, and also the for policies uh, regarding utilization of isros and other uh, research labs facilities because the facilities are very costly so there must be uh, policies to for to enable them to make use of the facilities there should be policies uh, for technology transfer very important uh, to flow to the uh, indian industries or whoever uh, wants to access some technologies and then uh, you know put them on the road towards uh, the uh, participation in the global space ecosystem i think uh, 
regarding technology transfer uh, there is uh, currently some work being done in by isro i think that will soon come out uh, in the near future is my understanding one of the recommendations or an article that i wrote about 6 months ago was actually on this uh, technology transfer because since i am actually based in europe in europe they have a broker network so essentially what happens is uh, they have isa is producing all the ip like isro and they know that they are not really good at going to the spin off industries and finding people to take it up because that's a more challenging task so what they have done is actually they have appointed uh, people who are specialized in technology brokering so they identify chemical industries you know infrastructure industries on all the other industries and their incentive is only if the technology is transferred to them they get paid so there is an incentive set in the system where the broker so it is very similar because isa has uh, let's say 15 different states and the technology broker network is in each of these states so even in india there's an opportunity there where each and every state in india can have a technology broker who can actually take the ips from isro and populate it to the regional industries in each and every state so that way actually you can have the flood of spin offs going directly and that is and that way you know isro does not uh, need to dedicate all its manpower test to focus on uh, spin offs so i guess there is a lot of uh, such inventive uh, thinking and incentivizing the industry to take up more uh, spin offs needed i agree with you the advantage of this would be that uh, isro's facilities are also spread out over many states and invariably these states will have a pool of uh, excess ro people also who are uh, who can be knowledge mentors uh, and this is a very important uh, aspect that uh, will play into the uh, you know development of uh, new technologies and the products uh, by the commercial uh, space uh, industries and help them uh, in their uh, movement towards uh, establishing themselves as credible cre- credible companies i think this is a good point there are many uh, such uh, uh, strategies that can be adopted as far as technology transfer is concerned uh, it need not be with one agency which may create some bottleneck so it can be spread out over the country I agree with you i think uh, uh, the kerala space park what they have started in kerala uh, also is sitting with that kind of an advantage provided it is supported with the right kind of policies we see most of the space agencies or even um, you know public private partnerships in world today the new space realm a lot of them are actually utilizing leo to a maximum extent uh, however we in india have still uh, you know we are still mainly doing earth observation related aspects in leo and we have not really matured to using communication assets uh, in leo as of yet um do you see any um, you know future there for a public private partnership of any nature or sure i mean uh, this is one area uh, where uh, definitely india has to uh, put in some effort and here uh, there are some companies in india who have done some preliminary work and they are looking very good now and who have established uh, themselves like astrom for example uh, and uh, we are also trying to t- see how they can come into the mainstream in india and uh, utilize the cons- leo constellation communication constellation very good concept and uh, they have some ips of their own and done some wonderful work uh, i think uh, uh, this is one company uh, that can uh, be partnered Uh, by uh, the uh, communication sector or by isro to see that uh, the uh, products and technologies that they bring in is beneficial to solve uh, the communication issues because leo brings in the low latency which will which may become essential in the f- near future because of the real time nature of operations that will be carried out by the communication network using satellites and it will complement well with the uh, terrestrial network also so that is a way to go as far as uh, communication is concerned in the future and uh, some companies in india are promising in this uh, particular uh, aspect like astrom i mentioned and there definitely should be a partnership and we are also trying to see how they can be uh, uh, you know they can play a larger role uh, towards enabling the country Uh, to achieving this goal in the near future there are uh, many aspects of uh, the space industry ecosystem today which are um, moving completely into the private sector so couple of examples that i can give you is actually even tracking of space debris 
or even taking back space debris into back into Earth and deorbiting satellites and so on. There are a number of US companies and other European companies that are independently trying to pursue these as services. The other future that is coming up is in-orbit servicing of satellites that mm. companies themselves are planning to do. So when you look at many of the legacy aspects of space, what would people think as this will be done only by governments are today all being done by private industry. And a lot of these activities, we haven't seen any roadmap in ISRO present, um, especially, for example, in in-orbit services or so on. So do you think you know, we need a new roadmap or a new vision where we kind of benchmark everything that is happening today and will happen in the next 10 years or so and can draw a new vision which will include all of these? I think uh, that is correct. I think we need... Uh uh, for the near future, uh, a debris management uh, program, uh, a separate program that has to be announced and uh, that has to be, these are the things that should be uh, seriously taken up by the state agency because uh, uh, today there is uh, no strict regulation as far as this is concerned, but everybody knows that this is a problem and whatever debris that we knowingly or unknowingly has put into the space, it is our responsibility to clear it so that tomorrow when many uh, smaller companies come and put their uh, satellites into the low earth orbit. Uh, they are not penalized by the debris uh, that uh, has been put in the past uh, by the state agency. So I think uh, this kind of a policy also has to appear in the, in the near future so that uh, 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 this may become a necessity in the near future. So it is good that you brought that point out. So definitely I think this is an important aspect that is to be looked, up, uh, looked at uh, currently. If you look uh, across developing countries, one of the bottlenecks for most of the people in the developing countries is actually a source for uh, support where risk can be managed in investment. Uh, and even in advanced countries like in uh, you know Luxembourg or other countries, you see actually state support to venture capitalists to mitigate some amount of risk. Uh, which institution in India, maybe even Antrix, uh, is there a possibility of any of these institutions to actually create or participate in a fund, uh, in a venture capitalist fund or uh, even a state-based fund to actually pick and choose innovative companies or innovative entrepreneurs and fund them to a certain extent where the risk can be actually shared? Uh, being a public company, we have limitation in uh, providing grants for these kind of operations. So basically, we, we are open to investment. But uh, we cannot put uh, an equity uh, investment just like that. So that needs a lot of clearances and uh, some policies. So we are looking around right now to see uh, whether we can make an investment in a business sort of an environment where we also get a return and uh, the participating company will benefit in some infrastructure being built by with our money. And they can use that facility to make their products. Uh, to provide some kind of a service and uh, in turn, uh, you know, we will also get our revenue back. So this model is more practical uh, as of today as far as companies like Antrix is concerned, being PSUs. But uh, risk management is a very important uh, aspect uh, after the advent of uh, or maturing of the uh, satellite-based services, especially the imaging services has come. Uh, even in India, there are companies which are providing this kind of service to financial companies. And uh, state agencies uh, taking it up to provide uh, this kind of a knowledge to various financial companies is a good idea. And uh, we can look at how best we can uh, be a part of it. But uh, our participation will be uh, based on uh, the uh, business investment that we can make in uh, such a venture currently. So this will be like an equity investment or is it No, it like will a not loan? be an equity investment. Equity it, investment will have a problem because yeah. being uh, uh, these, uh, whatever money we have is government money. Uh, so then we have to follow the government policies uh, regarding, uh, you know, uh, p pushing the uh, investment into, uh, into the market. So then <clears throat> if we have to invest, then probably it will be creation of a subsidiary or those kind of things. So that is a more involved activity and a private company may not be, uh, may not like to be owned by us, you know, and that is not the way to go move forward actually. So a better option will be the first option what I, what I mentioned, wherein if a company has got a good product, good idea, good product, 
and uh, then we uh, we can see how we can create a facility so that they can use that facility and uh, you know in turn you know we we get our revenue back and we have to also look at the risks and because this has to be cleared basically by the government so we have to see but we are looking around for such opportunities yes there's a number of uh, companies in india today who are extremely ambitious even to the to the extent of even having their own launch vehicle given that isro is the only operator of a launch base uh, at least a civilian one uh, do you think uh, there is uh, enough groundwork for these companies to succeed or even you know is there a possibility for isro sharing uh, a launch pad or even allowing the same area to be used to create an independent launch pad for the private sector to operate so that the there's a land or the uh, uh, range available for all of them to access of course you know it may be difficult for isro to give up the launch pad because if there is a uh, disaster or some card then it will affect the space program but see the problem is all this has to be the effects of a enabling space act so once a regulatory framework is made and they are enabled then only policies regarding utilization of the launch pad and how they are to be enabled etc will come but uh, in my personal view is that definitely this should be enabled because around the world we are seeing the same trend and there is a big market sitting out there for launch services and there are companies in india who look very good in developing small launchers and then getting into the business so to enabling that some proactive action is required uh, uh, from the government side to see that uh, they are also enabled but in future uh, the uh, defense services will also start uh, launching satellite probably so there may be more launch pads coming so one of these agencies has to think about you know uh, allowing uh, a private agency under some policy some conditions all that can be laid out and um, the safety issues regarding that also there should be some uh, mechanism to see and vet them uh, so that they can also uh, participate in this and we can follow the uh, many models uh, that is that are already available around the world uh, many countries are following for enabling the uh, private launches in their own countries so it is not that we are going to do it for the first time so there are successful models available and uh, they some of them have been very very successful and we are seeing a good market uh, that is uh, out there and which will bring in export revenue to the country so this is one area which requires specific attention and specific policies to be to be brought out uh, so that uh, this market doesn't go away from us uh, one of the areas that is still uh, kind of in the premature stages is actually commercialization of uh, india's navigation positioning system uh, of course the military uses are very obvious and needed for the country but you look at uh, how the commercialization of the positioning system can happen uh, how do you think this ecosystem will mature now i think uh, we are moving towards a merging of all the services uh, earlier there was this problem that we had to have our own chipset for making for enabling this and we ourselves have invested initially a lot of money in procuring the chipsets and making it available to whoever wanted it uh, in order to you know just uh, uh, give a fillip to the ecosystem development as far as navic is concerned but as more and more uh, services in vehicle traffic uh, uh, tracking and other services uh, based on uh, gnss is coming up we will also see these uh, chipsets uh, coming out uh, which will support uh not only gps but navic also and maybe some other constellations also and uh, we are seeing that this is naturally this will come it is not that uh, the commercial industry is very sensitive to price and when you want to buy uh, a chipset uh, exclusively for navic which is uh, costing hundreds of dollars where the gps chipset is available for you know 4 or 6 dollars it makes a lot of difference to a company which has to make uh, thousands of uh, tracking devices and supply to a uh, fleet owner so then uh, the, there is there are some commercial aspect uh, uh, which should uh, play into this and we are seeing that that is naturally happening and once those chipsets come with the integration of navic services as well as gps services this is uh, this will naturally play into uh, the propagation of uh, commercial services of navic in the civilian sector if you look at uh, how the entire space program in india was matured there was a lot of involvement from uh, early people who had uh, studied abroad or you know had seen the world ecosystem a lot uh, over time as the space program as india has matured a lot we've had uh, most people who are emerged as leaders of the space program 
fully homegrown in India. And um, essentially, what I'm trying to say is that uh, is there a need for actually whoever are, are growing into the role of leadership in inside of ISRO uh, to actually expose themselves more internationally, or is there are there you know programs where ISRO can get involved? Let's say in an international space university summer studies program or or any other programs like that, where essentially for a set time, these leaders who are emerging out of ISRO can actually be exposed to the international ecosystem so that they can uh, get to know the various aspects of how the system is evolving and they can come back to India and actually make the changes so that we can be on par. A uh, very good point. I think uh, uh, this is uh, required uh, looking at the way uh, India is moving in space and the way other countries are moving in space. There is definitely scope uh, for grooming uh, leadership who is uh, more understanding about what is happening around the world and what is required, what kind of policies are required, how to nurture the industries, how to, uh, what is the marketing, the commercial aspect of space. You cannot forget it. You know, you, I mean, there is the scientific uh, and uh, security applications are very important. But then today you are seeing that uh, commercial uh, applications of space is really booming. And uh, we have a responsibility to see that that is also uh, coming up and towards this uh, greater understanding of the international uh, space arena, the commercial space arena, the policies that are followed by many countries, what is happening around the world and what is happening within India, how many companies are there, what are the problems they are facing, etc. This awareness is very important uh, for you know driving the space uh, forward, uh, which will make India a real superpower in space in the future. That is a good point that you brought out. When you see many agencies or institutions that actually you know, look at studying space ecosystems around the world, one of the things that you look at uh, when you look at the people in them is that you find that people are understanding of one, the technology, the other is uh, policies, and the other is the business angle of all of these. So in India, I think, we don't have the intersection of all three together. You know, there is very little people in India who actually understand one, either people understand technology really well, or they understand, you know, policy aspects very well, or they understand some business related aspects very well. Uh, there is not many people in that in intersection who actually understand all three together, who can generate the kind of insights that, let's say, a European Space Policy Institute in Europe does, or many other such institutions like Secure World Foundation or such institutes do uh, abroad. No, you're right. I think uh, uh, for this, uh, we have to have a program in which to groom the youngst youngsters when they're coming up itself to interact with these kind of agencies, uh, the uh, Space Policy uh, Institute, uh, the uh, Secure World Foundation, many such uh, uh, non-governmental organizations are doing a great work in space and uh, that kind of an exposure uh, and a policy towards giving uh, people that kind of an exposure will definitely help in grooming such youngsters so that uh, when they come up the uh, ladder they are aware of uh, the uh, policies the uh, uh, the problems that we are having and what way we should uh, drive the system forward that is uh, uh, something that is uh, necessary now because earlier because of the limited scope of the uh, space and mostly uh, being driven by state and there is not much commerce that is happening and the business aspect is not really important compared to the other aspects. Uh, these uh, aspects we could one could uh, neglect. Uh, that was okay, probably five years back to five years back. But today, if you neglect, you stand to lose and we will also miss the bus uh, in this particular aspect. So that should not, we should not allow that, this to happen. One of the other aspects is also about the hiring process of people. When you look at um, ISRO, most of the vacancies are for technical people. Uh, and when you look at a lot of institutions in India which are very good, like let's say an Indian Institute of Management in Bangalore or other centers, they're producing extremely good graduates and we see actually none of those kinds of institutions uh, getting a chance, graduates from those institutes for working in ISRO or even Antrix or so on. Um, how, how can we actually move forward in absorbing that talent so that even those aspects can actually be absorbed? Okay, see, this is uh, true not only with ISRO but with other scientific institutions also. So I do not know uh, how uh, in uh, other countries whether there is a program wherein they induct people. But then ISRO is basically a scientific organization and in a scientific organization concentrating on scientific R&D, there is very little requirement uh, for 
uh, you know uh, a managerial uh, candidate to come in and then uh, drive it because uh, it is not based on a commercial consideration at all so the whole focus is on developing the technology and making it useful uh, to the country and probably the point that you are bringing may be important in the future because now we are seeing that uh, that is having some problems uh, it is uh, uh, throwing up so, uh, so that is affecting the progress of the country in space so maybe in future uh, it may be good to consider uh, a few uh, of those candidates also opening and then induct them also so that they can uh, see the other aspect the other side uh, of space <clears throat> and see that uh, the activities that are being done by the organization is uh, also aiding in the country to move forward uh, in the future. When you see India's own neighborhood, uh, Sri Lanka, Nepal, Bhutan, all of them have actually recently started their own space programs. Uh, Nepal launched its uh, first CubeSat, Sri Lanka launched its first CubeSat, you know, Bhutan launched its first CubeSat. Um, do you think uh, if we had evolved the industry ecosystem in India to a certain extent, these countries would have actually been markets for India? Not only these countries. If we had started sufficiently early, then we would be playing a big role in the CubeSat market because of the manufacturing advantage in the uh, manufacturing ecosystem that we have, not only in space, but many other areas. You can see many other industries as examples where many uh, big uh, uh, companies, multinational companies have come to India and set up their shop. So India being a large country, it can consume the services that are, that are being produced here. Not only that, and then it can also cater to the production of uh, quality systems uh, which is cost competitive compared to the production in many other countries. So this is one market uh, that uh, we can uh, even still uh, we are not too late even if you start now probably uh, we will be able to get into that because these countries have all starting uh, to see that only. But once the small satellite ecosystem and the services using small satellite both in the uh, communication as well as in the earth observation tomorrow you know you are seeing fantastic uh, applications. Uh, which will merge these uh, both the three services, the GNSS as well as the Earth Observation as well as Communication Services merge into, you know, providing applications to customers which will avoid delay, avoid uh, uh, unnecessary use of manpower, reduce a lot of costs and uh, these kind of applications when it comes, if you don't have an ecosystem for uh, manufacturing and launching uh, uh, satellites and also the development of applications related to that, you are missing out basically and India is a country which will need it more than anybody else because of the problems that we are facing in many areas. Uh, th this country needs uh, those uh, kind of applications and we should uh, get prepared to do that in the near future and uh, what you said is right we could have already catered to not only these three countries but many other countries as well and we should be making and giving. Today we should have companies which uh, you know can be approached uh, by any country and then uh, their satellites uh, requirements. When you see a lot of ISRO vendors, they have been used to working with ISRO with buyback arrangements. Do you think they are just too used to that work ethic and they are not willing to take risks because startups as such don't have money, they don't have manpower, they don't have facilities. And so, but then most of these SMEs are today like 25, 30 years old. And, uh, you know, but their mentality is what holds them back or what is your view on? Uh, I would say that I did discuss this issue with uh, some corporates. <laughs> the main issue is uh, lack of regulation. So the public limited companies have a fear uh, that uh, to get into an area where uh, by regulation it is not allowed will put them at a disadvantage rather than advantage. So they are holding back their cards. There are uh, companies who are capable of uh, taking up space. Uh, today there are no big corporates in space in India. But there are some corporates who are working with ISRO and then providing the services. So they can step up. They can step up and they have the capability to, uh, you know, design and get into the making their own IPs and then uh, get on with that. And <clears throat> they can also work with a lot of uh, startups and partner them and then get on to bigger things. But these uh, many of them, many of the big companies uh, are not prepared to do that uh, because they are not sure uh, about uh, what will happen. One thing is, of course, regarding the regulation. Second thing is, of course, regarding the revenue. That is also not obvious. And uh, there is also a lack of awareness. So this is also a reason. So many, many people don't know what is happening. And uh, uh, in India, they are exposed to only what ISRO is doing. And uh, 
these kind of opportunities are uh, not known to them so there are many factors uh, which are responsible for this uh, sort of dormant uh, ecosystem in space in india my uh, last question to you would be 10 years down the line from now how do you see one isro the other is antrix and uh, the private industry ecosystem and the startups okay my dream is that uh, isro should be a facilitator and uh, they should be broad minded enough uh, to help the private industries in india the startups and they should handhold them and also create a fund to see that uh, these uh, companies are properly set up and uh, this will in turn help the indian space program more than anything else you know when you create uh, an ecosystem which is capable of producing their own ips and their own products it is going to help the ecosystem help the space program there is no doubt about it and this is the future that i foresee and antrix can play an active role in commercializing the technologies and also you know antrix is a cash rich company and it can bring in uh, investment and then create with isro at the back end and the com commercial companies at the front end so all three roles are uh, clearly known only thing is we have to enable it so this is my dream thank you very much for your time today thank yeah. you naran thank you for coming down and spending time with me thank you for staying until the end if you have any comments or suggestions please write to curator at newspaceindia.com please consider sharing this episode with any friends or family who may be interested in learning about india's space activities if you would like to stay in touch with the new space india community please use the link in the description to join the new space india telegram group feel free to also suggest guests for any future episodes a new episode of the new space india podcast is released every other friday do subscribe to the podcast using apple google or any other podcasting platforms you may use thank you